Welcome to the NCO Journal Podcast. I'm Master Sergeant Maggie Nelson. Today I am joined on the phone by the Honorable Ryan McCarthy, Undersecretary of the Army and Sergeant Major of the Army, Daniel Daly. Thank you for taking the time to speak with us, gentlemen. Thank you. Well, thank you, Master Sergeant Nelson. I appreciate the opportunity. And the Army's mission in today's fight is complex. NCOs are hearing about Army modernization in the news as we are witnessing the emergence of an incredible and dynamic fighting force with NCOs who are unparalleled. That said, can you explain modernization? Mr. Ryan McCarthy? Uh, Sergeant Nelson, uh, if you look at the last 17 years of conflict, the, the uh, U.S. Army has been engaged in counterinsurgency, counterterrorism operations at a massive scale. Uh, primarily in the Middle East, but re really in, throughout Africa and East Asia. Uh, and in this time, near-peer competitors have made uh, very sophisticated and vast investments to counter our capabilities in the form of any access scenario denial. So if you look at the, the key weapon systems in our formations, like the Abrams, the Bradley, the Patriot, the Blackhawk, uh, those are force projection capabilities, whereas our near-peer competitors have made investments to counter that. They've made uh, st great strides in long-range precision fires, electronic warfare, uh, drone, swarm drone technology. So like any great organization, the U.S. Army has been number one for 242 years. But the challenge is, how do you stay number one? And Evolving and modernizing an organization when you're on top is difficult because it's, it's what, why now? Why is it different than a few years from now or a decade from now? And it's to prevent that complacency, but, uh, uh, but the reality of that, our near-peer competitors are catching up. So uh, when I was uh, brought on to the, to the team last, uh, invite, interviewed last spring from, uh, with Secretary Mattis, this was the primary focus that he said to me. This will be a mission that we need you to accomplish in your role as Undersecretary of the Army. So I came on board last uh, summer, and into the fall I sat down with the Chief of Vice and the Sergeant Major, and we looked at the, what do you have to do to really modernize an organization? You have to set a certain priorities. We set six priorities with uh, long-range precision fires, next-generation combat vehicles, future vertical lift, my, uh, network, my, uh, communications, air and missile defense, and soldier lethality spanning all fundamentals, shoot, move, communicate, sustain, and protect. So you get your priorities in line, then you have to really look at getting all your funding in line to invest against these capabilities. And then from a process standpoint, how do we look at future requirements, analyze requirements, shape them, interpret them, and then invest accordingly to procure capability in the form of these weapon systems going forward. And uh, as we go through that process, there's uh, no one community that will be greater to help us through this process than non-commissioned officers. That's why I've been partnering with the Sergeant Major to look at how we get senior non-commissioned officer support in this process to help advise us and make the best informed decisions. I'll tell you from my experience in the Office of the Secretary of Defense, to a leader in the defense uh, industry, when non-commissioned officers get involved, requirements become clear. And the operational concept gets more uh, easily, it's more easily understood to engineers, and then they can flesh out uh, those technical concepts to meet the intent of the weapon system, and you get the best capability for our men and women. So uh, very excited about the future. There's a lot of moving pieces right now, uh, but uh, we're, we're very blessed uh, to have Sergeant Major Daly support in this process. Thank you, Mr. McCarthy. Uh, Sergeant Major, how are our NCOs impacted specifically? Yeah, and I'll tell you, our NCOs are a big part of this modernization piece. Um, you know, first and foremost, our non-commissioned officer corps is our technical trade expert, experts of the United States Army. And their job is to train, educate our soldiers, um, and uh, maintain the subject matter expertise of the principles of the equipment that we used. You know, Undersecretary McCarthy just talked about requirements process. Um, requirements is so critical to get right as we modernize because we have to be able to clearly articulate what we need to be able to 
deter or defeat our potential adversaries in the future. And uh, in most cases, the end users of those materialistic solutions are our non-commissioned officers and our soldiers. And, uh, and they have years of experience of working on those platforms, and they can help us shape those requirements to make sure we get them right. And then we come back with a solution. We give those non-commissioned officers those uh, material solutions, and they utilize them with their soldiers, and they help refine those requirements. So the end line product for modernization is something that we can move forward with a program of record that will sustain us to the foreseeable future until we need to upgrade those systems in the future. And then there'll be another process where the non commissioned officers involve themselves to do that when there needs to be upgraded as well. After a long-term sustainable use of that um, on, in the training and the battlefield. So throughout the entire system, the non commissioned officer is critical to the role of modernization. They have been uh, in the past, and they always will be relevant to that process in the future. Yeah, just, you know, if you really look at requirements, they can help you take weight off a weapon system, simplify its use. So it, it, there's no one better than the non-commissioned officers. They're the end users of these weapon systems, and they can help us improve upon all of its capabilities to make it more, make it faster and more lethal on the battlefield. Uh, Mr. McCarthy or Sergeant Major, with all this vision here, will there be major changes in how our formations train and fight in the future? Well, I think uh, I believe there will be. Um, and for a couple reasons. We're going to have to change the way we train. And we've been doing that. We always say that. We're going to change the way we train and fight. But, you know, it might be in different domains, domains of which we don't train in today. So instead of doing live training like we do now, um, there's a domains of virtual and constructive training that, um, depending on the resource and capabilities that we have and the, and the, and, and the modernization pieces of equipment that we utilize, we may not have to use the same old ways that we train now to get after the task we need to train and educate and prepare our soldiers for war for the future. We've got to think of this from a readiness aspect. What is the best way we deliver training and expertise to increase the lethality and readiness of the soldier? And that may be combined through through different means of which we don't use today. Mr. Secretary? Uh, yes, sir, Major. We, we uh, For our synthetic training environments, We've made, we're making a large investments to provide capability to not only just like we do with the, our helicopter aviation um, uh, personnel, but also in the infantry and the armor long, and uh, the artillery units. Because this synthetic capability, you can replicate different types of terrain and have an exponential number of repetitions per hour on a system at a much more affordable uh, uh, per unit cost than you would in the reality. So have that blend between actually getting out and firing live rounds on the range to doing it in the virtual environment so we get more repetitions, more training prior to deployment. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. Um, for the Sergeant Major, what are the major differences between how the Army trained in the past when you were a junior NCO compared to the present? Yeah, it's a great question. You know, and I'd like to start off with the simple fact that some of it has not and probably should not continue to change. And those are the things that we call the basic principles, the basic knowledge skills that every soldier has to have. Even in the future, many of those will sustain. Even when modernization takes us to a next level, some of us don't even or can't even comprehend today, the basics of what our soldiers need to do to shoot, move, and communicate, survive on the battlefield must be trained to sustain the same way we've been doing it. Um, rifle marksmanship fundamentally has not changed for 100 years, and it won't. Um, it is the disciplined practice of doing the task that really makes people good. When people ask me about our special operations forces and our rangers, and I tell them all the time, what makes our ranger organizations good is they're good at the basics. They're really, really good at the basics. So some of that will not change. Now, what will change is, we will require more of our soldiers um, in the future than we do today. You know, the same thing will be uh, true in the future as it is today, that uh, blood, uh, I mean, the sweat uh, um, given in training will, will reduce blood in, in combat, and that won't change. But the way and the nature of how we trained our soldiers, um, I think more on just replacing parts as a mechanic in the future will translate to theory of how the system works, a true understanding of the networks that we're going to use in our modernized platforms and how they interact with each other. We're going to have to take a soldier to the next level 
and that may require them being able to train in virtual environments. For example, um, looking inside of a vehicle without even tearing it apart, you know, and having goggles on, and that, that capability, taking them inside that vehicle and actually seeing the fault with inside that vehicle before even having to disassemble that vehicle. These are ways and means that we can train, even as early as today, that we're definitely going to need in the future to increase our lethality and reduce our um, costs and resources. Mr. Secretary? Uh, no, sir, Major, I'm glad you made the comment there about the maintenance uh, for synthetic training. The Air Force and the Navy do this very well so that uh, they don't have to take um, equipment off the line for training. It increases operational readiness rates. That's a great point. And you discussed uh, Rangers earlier, Sergeant Major. Uh, Mr. McCarthy, you can give a comparison as well, being from the 75th. Yeah, it's been a long time since I've been in the Ranger Regiment. I'm sure they were probably a lot better and a lot faster than I was uh, when I was there. But um, that, you know, when I have been back to see them during my time in OSD and again last fall, it's just amazing at how much they have evolved. Their sophistication in their operations are just faster, uh, better. They've changed a lot of their TTPs. But I think the Sergeant Major's point, uh, they do the little things very well. Their troop leading procedures, the preparation for combat, how they do their rehearsals, and quite frankly, just the fundamentals of marksmanship. They practice very well. They're very disciplined by the way they practice. Um, you know, it's it's a... Uh, it's the little things. If you, you look at great organizations, that discipline to doing the little things right. Well, Mr. McCarthy, Sergeant Major, is there anything that we haven't covered that you'd like to add? I would just say is uh, one thing that we all have to embrace is the fact that uh, it's natural to resist change. It's natural um, to not want to take the next step to do something that you're doing that you're very comfortable in right now, and we have to get beyond that. As an NCO Corps, as an officer corps, and as a civilian corps, we got to look beyond our current capabilities, take the blinders off at the U.S. Army, and realize that we may or may not still own the competitive advantage in everything. And uh, by merely doing that and identifying the potential weaknesses we have, we'll get better. Mr. McCarthy? Um, you know, it's uh, NCO participation and advice and counsel in this process will be critical. As we start to move the money and prototype weapon systems and experiment with them, it's going to be the non-commissioned officers are going to be the ones that are going to tell us whether or not they're going to work. And those will help inform me, folks like me here in the Pentagon, on these big multi-billion dollar decisions. When I get out there and I have the opportunity to see it at NTC and to see it uh, prototyped at, at the labs, it'll be sitting down at lunch or talking out on a range with non-commissioned officers about that feasibility. And uh, I know that uh, we'll get the candor and the conviction uh, from our men and women in the, in the NCO Corps, and I know that that will help us make some very good decisions and prepare us for this evolution as we face very large and substantial tr threats from near-peer competitors in the future. I appreciate the opportunity to talk with you all. Um, I, it, there's, it, it's getting an opportunity to communicate with the NCOs, but it, it'll be great to get the feedback from them as they get out some more and visit the force. Mr. McCarthy, Sergeant Major Daly, thank you again for joining us and being part of the NCO Journal podcast. My fellow NCOs, follow us at facebook.com slash NCO Journal and on Twitter at NCO Journal. Put your knowledge in print, submit articles, join in on the discussions. Until next time, I'm Master Sergeant Maggie Nelson.